Hi, welcome to One Word a Day. I'm Sophie, your pilot into the universe of Chinese. Let's continue unpacking some Chinese set phrases. That's a translation of Western technology. Um, okay, today we're going to talk about Lu Se Neng Yuan. We have been talking about the Neng, um, atomic energy, solar energy in the past two days. And today, instead of saying um, Lu Se Neng, just continue this three character formation. We actually add energy source. We add the source to it. I guess the reason why is because four character formation is still the regular or default position. Like when we hear three, it's almost like unfinished. When we hear four, then it makes more sense to us or more finished or complete, complete for us. And Lu Su, color of green. Chinese in this case actually is a little bit of redundancy, right? Because we want to make sure it's the Lu, the, the color that we're talking about. So we add a color to it. So we have to say green color instead of just green. That's something interesting because in uh in English, we can just say green. We don't have we don't have to say well almost like a green defaulted to be the color of green. Uh, even if green may, means uh, environmentally friendly, uh, we don't really spell out which green we're actually meaning. It's contextually defined. In a lot of way, ways, that Chinese are con contextually defined. But in this particular case, because it's a translation, so it's like a full spell of something, make sure it's super specific. You know it's the color of green that we're talking about, the green. And you know this is the energy, and we add a source after energy to make sure you know it's about energy. <laughs> it's really a, kind of a redundancy to me. And but if we extract just lu and neng, lu neng, that still doesn't sound like like audibly. If we say lu neng, it doesn't really make sense to us yet. If we say lu se, we know okay, it's a color green, and neng yuan. Then we know, okay, it's about energy. Lu se neng yuan. Then it becomes the formula that we can clearly hear and decipher. I guess if green energy was used, um, become incorporated in our daily life a lot more, like occurring in our language a lot more, I'm sure it, it's going to be get simplified into just lu neng. We don't. We can skip the other redundancy part. Uh, but so far, it hasn't been um, playing a much bigger role in our daily language use. So we still keep it fully spelled out, little redundancy form. Okay, Lu is made of this color, I mean, made of this fabric thing, which are two, two spools of thread connected by a common thread, a thread running through, and then it's Come, becomes this 2D form of a drapey fabric. So that gives you almost like the lifespan of how a fiber becomes a fabric. Fiber, fabric, okay. Um, so this, when you see that on the left side of this character, you know it's something related to fiber or fabric. The right side is a little bit blurry. I don't exactly know the details of that. Um, it's something related to carving things onto a surface. So when it paired with a fabric, it means the color of a blend of a blue and a yellow. <laughs> wow, that's a later company. I mean, I guess that probably in ancient times that people discovered that you combine blue and yellow, mix it up, it becomes green. Maybe ancient times that people already discovered that, um, but it's not, it's, Okay, I, I guess color green is not that commonly used ancient uh, in ancient pigments because in ancient pigments, when we're depicting the mountains or the river or the water body, we're using qin, uh, which is between the green and the blue. Um, so anyways, this is a color of green um, that's originally existing in fabric. And then they transferred into um, all kinds of green depicting um, applications uh, of the green color, not just on fabrics. 
Se, we have two persons stacking up. The, the first person is, is like this. So it's like a side view, side view of a person. Uh, this, you can view it as a, the arm, and these are the torsos, and this is the leg and torso they so connect together. And this is another person doing similar posture, um, it's, but it's more like sitting on the heel here. This is the heel elongated, and this is the calf, the knee, the, the thigh, uh, the, the backbones, uh, all that. So there are two persons stacking up each other. So one version of explanation is that one person is in a submissive position because they are sitting on their heels. They lose their ability to attack. So they give up their you know, combative possibility to show they are in submission. And the other person simply is a side view, person view. Uh, or it, it could be like a more generic person. So that person is not in a sitting on a heel position. So that person in comparison to this submission person. So that's more like a you know, person in a higher power position. And according to Chinese, facial expression reading, this between the two eyebrows power, um, that's kind of our frowning part, right? If you're upset, upset or you're frustrated or you're not happy about something somebody you probably will you know pucker up in between your eyebrows and that shows so you know you're in trouble something like that so chinese have already taught through our social skills like a reading of human body language by looking at this particular part and that's kind of read off the vibe of that person is that person in a good mood or by bad mood at least Right. So that people reading like this person in this submission position, trying to decode the other person's mood. That's the first version of explanation. So this vibe reader then transfer to the color uh, because color, I guess, is a vibration of energy, but it came in a color format. Right. And so it's kind of a, we are reading the energy of that person as if it's emitting a certain color to us. <laughs> okay, it's a little bit of stretch, but it's an energy form, right? Where between interpersonal um, setting or just we versus nature, we, we, we see the nature energy form bounce up and comes to our eyes and we decode it as a certain color. So that's kind of a, a, a reading of nature as well. Okay, second version. Um, uh, suggested by uh, audience of this channel and I, I share that here because I think twice at least the audience share with me their learning and I think that makes sense as well. So the other version is ancient times this two persons stacking up each other in, I guess in a oppressor oppressy uh, power structure you can understand but in another setting it's two persons having sex. So the person on the top and the person at the bottom are, you know, <laughs> I don't know about the body positioning uh, of there, but the stacking up of two human bodies on top of each other, of they are having a moment of themselves. And this eventually transferred of su is related to anything that's uh, sexual activity in Chinese. We actually have su uh, ji, which is last caution, uh, that's a movie directed by An Li. And this lust is a Chinese su character. So it not only means color, um, it, it, it means a particular kind of color. Um, it's the human activity. That's between, I guess, that's the ultimate energy exchange, right? Between two individuals. Um, so that way, we can also view that like interpersonal interaction, basic interaction as to use to read off people's body language or facial expressions. And the ultimate human interaction is having more intimate moments of feeding off each other's energy. So in either um, versions, you can sort of explain that why Chinese use su, this vibe, this energy reader or energy exchanger as the color concept, because it is a vibration. It is an energy form just in the color format. Okay. Lu Again, 
specified as the color green. Neng Yuan, we have Neng, uh, which is this spacer. I guess this is arch. It's a space. And then we just put two axes in there to show you the pattern. And then you notice this, this have to touch, right? Because this crisscross signs, they have to, you know, to, for them to, to form a, a net, they, they have to be a continuation of crisscross, right? Things are over intersected. They are overlaid on top of each other to create this crisscross pattern. And the Chinese just show two of those to give you the multitudes, the, the, the pattern starter, and then you fill out the blank of the rest of the net. You don't have to you know, draw it out for you. That's the beauty of the abstraction. So just give you two. And then at the bottom is the bear symbol. So bear is, in ancient Chinese, is the ultimate symbol of muscle power, <laughs> which is, I guess, bear was viewed as the biggest owner of biceps in the animal world. They have the biggest biceps. So this is the bicep. And then these are the four legs of the bear, and this is the head of a bear. Okay, one story. Uh, I, I, I have reservations of that. One day I probably can discover more about why this is a bear symbol, or this could be something else. Till then, I'm just living with it. Bear nested means it's controlled or contained muscle power. And muscle power probably is a beginning because it's an animal muscle power that we try to harness, we can use that. Uh, humans, we have muscle power, but it's limited, right? So, I mean, definitely bears have bigger biceps <laughs> than us. So if we can harness that, that's a, a, a even higher um, volume of power. Or in English, we have force power, right? We use force to measure the power and that's a form of animal power. So that's the beginning of a humans being able to tap into the, the other non-human power forms. So that's it, there's a source, the beginning. And so we kind of fixated on that to represent energy. And eventually we have all kinds of energy that we, new forms of energy we find out and can capture and contain and control, use that. And in this case, it's Lu Se, Nong Yuan, green energy, recyclable energy, but, the origin or the first form of human mastered energy is muscle power energy, just like horse power implied. Okay. And the Yuan um, is this mountain, which is this high ground. And I often you know, emphasize this in this 2D frame of Chinese, you know, frame or space of Chinese characters. If um, you see this borderline only bordered on the top left corner, using these two lines, creating top left corner. That means high ground. So it's most likely a mountain, some higher elevation uh, location be from in comparison to your location. That's higher rise and then you. And then we have this kind of a pot splitting sign, which is kind of looking like that, right? So it's kind of something opening. So it starts from the one vertical line, like that, and then, I mean, it shouldn't pass through. I made a mistake up there. Um, it's starting from this point, right? And then I can, it, it spread out. I mean, it gives you a sense of, it starts small and then it open up. It, almost like a flower bell shape, flower thing, right? And then it, this middle part is something. In this case, it's a water. So water drip drop. And then it has a vertical line going out, meaning water coming out of its origin or its pocket. So I guess water forms in nature could be like after rain or snow melting and the water is contained somewhere, right? And drip drop, finally depart or detach from its original location. And then a trickle down to start have this long journey of water recycling in nature and Chinese capturing that, uh, capturing that of this one raindrop thing or you know, drop of water and then going out from its origin, from its you know cocoons or baby form <laughs> or its original habitat. And then there are multitudes of those. So that's Chinese visualization of water trickling formation from the mountain. And we use this water origin, water source to mean the, the origin of things, the source of things. 
So I guess in Chinese, we, we express a lot of concepts starting from one, one context, and then we can transfer that or extrapolate it into, uh, to apply to all kinds of contexts. So water source, then in, in this case, transfer it to be the energy source. It's not nothing to do with, I mean, even if water can be one form of energy, but source in here is applying or attached to energy to mean that's the, the origin or where it came from. Um, okay, so wait, I didn't translate it right, okay. Wrong, okay, it means recycle energy or green energy, I guess I, I can just translate it as green energy. Um, sorry about that, I don't want to re-record it. But you see here, I, I captured this frame of green energy in this wind farm format and on this rolling green rolling hill. And that's kind of visually representing green energy in the visual sense, as well as it is application utilitarian sense as well, that humans eventually have, um, can control all kinds of forms of energy. And the green energy is the future or the, you know, the, the one more um, form of energy that we can, we can, I guess, to be more carbon neutral, right? This is one way to not burning things. Uh, not cutting trees down. And this is one way to capture um, the energy just by flowing air. And that's kind of like a freebie, but yeah, investment upfront of the, those windmills. Uh, all right, so that's green energy. I should do a currency of thinking about one more day with sufficient energy.